Good afternoon to all of the students and staff at Hubert College and welcome to the third of our webinars for health and social care students in conjunction with Sapien Care Group with Philippa Law comparing and I'm Robert Powell, I'm the Managing Director of IPS. So this afternoon it gives me uh, great pleasure to introduce a gentleman by the name of John Spencer who has spent his career uh, in the areas of uh, gynaecology and termination, which is a very controversial subject at the best of times. So I hope you enjoy this afternoon's webinar. It's been a interesting and uh, some might think quite a long career. I qualified in 1976. I suspect you were, uh, many of you were a twinkle in somebody's eye at the time. So for 40 years, I had a career in the National Health Service. Uh, broadly speaking, it's 10 years of training after qualifying as a student. Um, so I, I was uh, appointed a consultant in 1986. And my consultant career was uh, 20 years of National Health Service obstetrics and gynecology. That's broadly speaking, to do with uh, women having babies and uh, uh, women's problems generally. And that spans right through from cancer, right through to uh, family planning. Really. Then the final uh, 10 years of my career, I took a change. I went to work for the uh, sexual and reproductive healthcare charity called uh, Mary Stopes International. It's uh, rebranded its name to NSI Reproductive Choices. Uh, if you now Google, uh, you Google it. Um, and I was their first uh, consultant. And um, the evolution of my period of 10 years there has ended up with them now having a medical director. So they've become quite a a serious uh, healthcare organisation, but they're not in the NHS. Ah, there are so many anecdotes. I mean, how long have you got? But I'll tell you one sad story um, that um, when I was in the, my first 10 years tr still training before I was appointed as a consultant, um, I was called to see a woman, a young woman, I think 17, 18, who attended the accident and emergency department and was forwarded on to the gynecology department, the ward. Um, and she came in, she just said she's uh, had a miscarriage. And I was on duty, so uh, underwent the examination. And uh, quite surprisingly, I saw the signs there of something much larger than miscarriage. And um, so we, I, I don't remember, I think it was the before we did routine scans anyway for whatever reason we, we took her into the theater as we did in those days we, we, that doesn't happen now one can one can do what's called um evacuation of any you know any retained tissues and that kind of thing now without necessarily having an anesthetic but it, it we're, we're going back a couple of uh, decades or more don't always like to remember that but um took this young woman into theater examined her properly, made sure everything was clear, and quite clearly she had lost term pregnancy. In other words, a pregnancy that was a lot bigger than just three to four months. So when she woke up from the anesthesia, I went back to talk to her and gently counseled and cut a long story short, she had an unwanted, undeclared un undeclared and in fact unrecognized pregnancy until the day before um went into labor on her own and went out through the into the back garden into the shed delivered this um rather surprise package in a bucket and um 
then took the baby's body, wrapped it up in newspaper, buried it in the garden, came back indoors, called the ambulance and came to us. And that was the following morning. We were talking to her and I, we got her to accept the fact that all this needed to be declared and so on and so forth. And as we were finishing the conversation, the police turned up. Because, of course, either a parent or somebody had noticed the trail of blood from the shed back to the garden and the house and so on and so forth. And so the, the law for, for that technically is infanticide. But the question, of course, would be whether or not the baby had, uh, was, was delivered alive and then died or was actually a stillbirth. And the answer in this particular case is that it was impossible to say. So the uh, death was registered as a stillbirth. The incident was registered as a stillbirth, which took her out of the reach of the law. And she had appropriate counselling. And, you know, it's just a very sad end. Fortunately, the reason I choose this story is it's not someone who's died from complication, from complications, it's not someone who's had a real problem. She, she'll, have, she'll have some psychological issues to deal with, but, but she's still healthy. So there we are, it's just one story. Thank you to everybody who's um, come to uh, to listen to John talk this afternoon, and, um, and and Philippa and Tina for asking the questions. I mean, that was an incredible um, webinar. Uh, I'm lost for words, and I'm in total admiration for what you've done um, in your career, um, John. So thank you so much for um, for coming on this afternoon. That was absolutely fascinating and quite moving, actually, as well. Um, it, it, I think it's impossible to talk about it without being emotional. Um, but thank you so much. Brilliant.